Hey guys, it's Mike and you're watching That's Cool Vintage Collectibles and yesterday I was up at the Toronto Sports Card and Memorabilia Expo and this is something now, this is my third one um, as I've returned to the hobby of sports memorabilia collecting and it was uh, a blast. This might have been my favorite one actually. I think the, um, the most amount of uh, dealers and things to look at and um, really enjoyed myself. It was a good uh, way to spend a rainy day otherwise. And uh, there's, there's so much to see and there's so many dealers and unique things that you don't normally come across and even met a couple of hockey players, which is pretty cool. Got some stuff signed. So that was uh, really a fun day. I'm going to show you all the pieces I brought back. And um, there was one piece in particular that is uh, unbelievably uh, interesting to me. So I'm going to show you that as well. So here's what I got. <music> Before I show you what I got, let's take a look at the show itself. It is so impressive and just the amount of, of things there for sale and you could you could spend a week there and not see it all. It's really interesting. So here's a bunch of photos I took. Uh, I thought I'd just give you a little taste of what the show looked like. Okay, so here's some of the items I got at the show. Uh, I'm working on finishing this 1980-81 uh, Opeachy hockey set, so I got a bunch of cards for that. Uh, and I also collect this set with um, uh, kind of my uh, uh, Lake Placid collection of Miracle on Ice, and all the players that uh, played in that have that USA logo on that. So I collect those on the side as well. Uh, and I'll do another video on my uh, Miracle on Ice collection because I've got quite a bit of stuff from that. So that's from the 1980 Olympics. Uh, so these are just, there's another one of those guys that I needed for the set that I'm building in this season. And a couple of ones that I hadn't found in a while. This last one, um, Peter Mahovlich, uh was actually one I needed and I picked up. But I also brought one of his cards because... I had heard he was going to be there just kind of checking out the show and I was able to actually run into him and I brought this one with me from home and he uh, he signed that when I saw him yesterday. So uh, Peter Mahovlich, uh, Hall of Famer, great uh, to have on the Team Canada card. So that was a nice addition to the collection that I didn't know I was going to get. So that one is pretty fun just to add in. Uh, next up. I'm also set building the 86, uh, 87 set, and there's three cards I needed for that one. So that is, sorry about the glare. That's just three I needed to get uh, to get in there. Um, next up, this is some non-sports stuff, uh, and I wasn't looking for it, but it was so cheap I picked it up. This is uh, all cards from the 1978 Kiss uh, set, which I have some of these already. Um, but pretty hard to come across these sometimes. And these aren't in the best shape, but I kind of don't care. That's fine. They're all original and, um, they're a unique, uh, image and sort of different style of cards. So I'm happy to find these. This is pretty cool. Um, so there you go. That is the, uh, the first little batch of cards. I bought a little set while I was there. This is the 87, um, 
a small card set made by Tops, um, and they're a that wood grain pattern from 80. I don't know how many are in this set, maybe 40, um, but uh, 87, and uh, pretty cool, pretty cool little set of mini cards and star players in in 87. So it was I I don't know I'm a sucker for little sets that are small. Uh, and easy, you know, 40, 60 card sets, that type of thing. Really like those. Um, I also got these. These are uh, 1970 Topps uh, baseball booklets, and they look like cards, but um, here's the Ernie Banks. You actually open them up, and they're like a comic strip. So kind of interesting. Uh, pretty fun little booklet to have. So that was the first batch of pickups. Okay, up next, this piece is absolutely amazing. I was so happy to find this, being a big uh, Detroit Red Wing collector. Um, this is a 1953 program from the Olympia, and inside is signed by pretty well the whole team. Uh, there's Alex Del Vecchio right there. Um, great, great stuff, and it's a, it's a wonderful old program, and... That day, they were, the lineup cards are in the middle. Um, this is a pretty cool piece of history. There's the Red Wing lineup, and they were playing Boston that day. And the Boston lineup's over here. That page is loose, but it's intact anyway. It's there, and it gets better. The back page is also signed. And there's an autograph down here that's upside down, but this is a very, very young Gordie Howe. So very, very happy to have that. Bill Deneen up there. A lot of the uh, the great Red Wings, Red Kelly. Uh, just some amazing stuff uh, from another era and um, awesome collectible. I, I was really pleased to find that. That might be my favorite thing for sure. Okay, up next is this great uh, signed plaque from Marcel Dion. He sets up a booth here every year selling stuff. It's super cheap. I can't believe it. Um, but, you know, great collectible piece to have. And uh, on this plaque, yeah, they do them up, these photos. It's really cool. Um, so that was there and for sale, which was a lot of fun. And knowing he was going to be there, I brought a card from home this time to have him sign. And... Uh, Got that one on there as well. So that was really cool. That was good of them to sign and add that to my Red Wing collection. Uh, this is just an old baseball card I found. Um, I, I think it's uh, 52 Bowman. Um, it's got a pretty good solid crease in it. But uh, I think this must be in uh, 53. No, number 69 in the 52 series. So, yeah, 52 Bowman. Um I don't know much about that player, and it's got an awful crease, but it was cool. I just like old vintage baseball stuff, so that one came home as well. Uh, this is another vintage baseball item. This is 1948 uh, Kellogg cereal. Uh, it's not an actual player, but it's about baseball. This was $10, and I thought that was kind of interesting, so just... Uh, Sport Tips was the uh, collection that was put out through Kellogg's. It's kind of cool. So that one is a baseball one I just added. Uh, another batch of signed Red Wings stuff. Um, I needed Danny Grant, so I got that one. Uh, and these were three um, that I was really happy to find. Super good price, too. Glenn Hall, um, Ted Lindsay. I already had Ted, but... The price was so good, I thought, oh, I don't mind picking that up again. And a guy I needed was Steve Chase on. So I'm trying to uh, get the all-time Detroit Red Wings signed players. Um, I've been working on that for a little while. This uh, is a couple of just really oddball things. Um, James Bond card. And uh, I like these old uh, 1950s monster cards. Um and they were made by Tops as well, but they're kind of cool. Not expensive. Okay, up next, this is a little uh, small set from Kmart and Tops that I've actually been looking for for a little while. It's uh, a 20th anniversary of Tops baseball cards, 
and um, has some information about the year and the uh, the history. So it's kind of the history of um, Topps baseball cards up until the early 80s. So that set I'd been looking for for a little while and was able to find that one. Well, we'll look at some vintage baseball now. We've got a, uh, a nice 78 Don Sutton, a 69 Steve Carlton. This is a card from the late 70s, a Hank Aaron card. I don't really know what this is from. I'll have to do some research on this one. It doesn't have a number um, or a company name, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that's about. Uh, what uh, we've got a nice vintage. Uh, sorry, I hit the camera there. Uh, Red Shane Deist, uh, good card. Um, Nolan Ryan, this is a '78 Nolan Ryan. That was five dollars. That was kind of a cool, cool old vintage Nolan. Uh, six dollars I paid for this 1961 Luis Aparicio card, and a '63 Elston Howard for three dollars. Pretty cool. So '75 Johnny Bench. Uh, nice condition on that one. Pretty cool card. 71 Johnny Bench, not the greatest condition, but three dollars couldn't turn that one away. A 70 Bill Mazeroski, two dollars. Uh, I am building the 82 and 83 Don Russ sets, and these are a couple I needed. I needed uh, Reggie Jackson, so that was 50 cents. And I was able to get this Tony Gwynn rookie. I didn't pay 25, but that's what he had on it. But um, those are two that I needed to finish uh, that or complete, get closer to that set anyway, not, not finishing it yet. Um, a few more modern cards that were just kind of in there that I picked up. This is uh, Derek Jeter, Topps Future Star. Uh, for a dollar, I got this Sterling Sharp autograph and an 86 Don Russ Roger Clemens, early card of his, which was kind of fun. Um, some more vintage uh 54 Bob Feller. Um, this is the top scoops set. Um, and I don't know uh, much about it, but it's a newspaper sort of headline on one side and the uh, the image on the other. This one's in pretty rough shape, but ten dollars, and I was able to bring that home. So pretty cool. Um, this is three cards from the 1970 Opeachy. These black and white ones. I've got a Louis Tiant. Um, a Carl Yastrzemski and a Bob Gibson. And these are just blank on the back. I don't know how many's in the set, uh, but the price was certainly right. $4 and $6. And I think I paid $2 for Louis Tiant, but they're, they're pretty cool cards. I got those to add in. And last up, a little, well, there are a few more things. Um, this is a set made by Diet Pepsi in the 90s. It was unlicensed, so no logos, but um, pretty cool set of stars of the early 90s. And lastly, I picked up this 1983 Return of the Jedi complete set. Uh, this is the red. Uh, I have been working a little bit on the various Star Wars sets that were out in the late 70s to the early 80s. And uh, in fact, I completed the 77 set yesterday by getting these three uh, stickers. I needed the Tuscan Raider, uh, R2-D2, and Luke Skywalker. That completed the 77 Blue Series 1 for me. And now I have the red Return of the Jedi set all complete as well. So there's a look at uh, what I picked up yesterday. And, um, you know, being a Canadian show, there are uh, piles of vintage hockey. Um, and as a vintage baseball guy, not as much of that stuff floating around. So harder to find the vintage baseball stuff that I like to collect, but I managed to get a bit and a little bit of hockey, actually. So it was a good time. I really enjoyed the show and uh, looking forward to the next one. So Hope you enjoyed checking that out. And on this channel, we do uh, sports memorabilia, sports cards. We also do rock and roll memorabilia, records, instruments, and anything vintage that I just kind of enjoy uh, collecting. So if you like that, give us a like and subscribe. Keep on collecting. We'll see you next time.